Hello, thank you for joining me. Um, so today I thought I will do a recording of uh, me reading a few more chapters since yesterday I had to cut it short because there was some noise in the house. My housemate was doing some cleaning or something. So I'll read from where I left off yesterday, which is chapter 4, just the end of chapter 4. So please go back to the previous um, video I've uploaded if you want to uh, hear me read the other chapters and the blurb of, the, of my novel. <coughs> By 10.30 the next evening, Eve was in a village in the savage Barbadian mountains. She looked at the cabin that stood perched on the hill at the base of the mountain. It was all covered in snow, as was most of the surrounding area. The drive there hadn't been easy, as many of the roads were blocked and she had to wait for them to be cleared, but she made it eventually. Even in the darkness, the white of the snow was visible. She walked a long way up, and when she reached the door of the cabin, she turned the key and walked in. Warmth hit her as she entered the space. The fire was crackling in the fireplace. She shook the snow off her clothes and took them down, stepping towards the burning fire. There was a large shadow on the wall near her. Eve spoke to it and then nodded. Yes, we have a lot to do indeed, she said, and then she rubbed her hands together and brought them closer to the flames. Later, she settled onto the cabin to spend the night. The flight and the drive had been long and tiresome, and she hoped sleep would cure her soon. Instead, nightmares followed, stealing her sleep and her already fragmented, crumbling peace. So this is the end of chapter 4. Now I'll continue reading chapter 5, and I'll probably read until chapter 8. My chapters, as I mentioned in the previous video, they're really short, like two pages, around two pages. <coughs> Chapter 5 The next thing that Luke recalls is blackness stained with deep, lingering red. He wakes up. It smells like burning. There is, there is blood everywhere and heat. Their front car is crushed, the windscreen broken, in, broken into pieces. Somebody else's car is in flames, as well as partially crushed. The driver has passed out with his head on the wheel. Luke turns and sees Alison screaming in horrendous pain. She is bleeding, covered in blood. No, she is not giving birth. She is injured, possibly dying. Her, her groin is stabbed by a chunk of metal from the impact. Luke is bruised and bloody, but he removes the seat belt and crawls towards her. He holds her hand, this time bruised and stained with blood. A great deal of blood. Her tears mingle with blood from her broken eye arcade and flow down her cheeks, turning her face into a mask of red, a Halloween mask. Only that it's not Halloween. It's winter and the snow is stained with red. The baby, Luke, please save him. Promise me you'll save him. She pleads between sobs, grabs him tightly by the hand and doesn't let him go. Luke stares shocked at the damage all around him. Flames, sharp, broken glass, blood, more shards of glass, twisted metal. But in front of him is the most horrendous bloody sight. The chunk of metal is one with Alison's body her blood covering her skin and the metal altogether. The skin crawls inside Luke. Fear eats at him. His hand trembled, trembled from the cold and the shock. But looking into Alison's eyes, tears pricking them, he stills himself. I will. I promise you. Luke whispered gently, holding her bruised hand. He tries to release Alison from the wreckage. The metal is cold, unmovable. The sharp wind bites at his cheeks and stings him. He is vaguely aware of his cheek bleeding. Alison's eyes are closed now, but blood is still running from her. Luke tries to stop the bleeding, but all he manages is to get his hands covered in blood. Their blood. So much blood. Despite his several efforts, the snow quickly turns into an ocean of red all around him. He feels the cold touch of something gentle on his skin. He looks up. There are snowflakes falling down on them. Large, white and pure. Then darkness and more pain. <coughs> Chapter 6, which is very short. Luke turns away from the window, the storm and the darkness ahead. From the distance, he gazes at the baby in the basket. He approaches slowly, cautious not to wake him up. 
When he looks down, the baby looks right into his eyes and giggles. His own baby would have been around the same age as this one. The girl runs down looks scarred cheek, but he smiles back at the chubby, brown-eyed baby, who is now falling asleep in front of his eyes. I think this is my, sh my shortest chapter. <clears throat> chapter 7 After the funeral ended, Luke took the path to the first and only public, area, public bar in his area, and the first glass of beverage he ordered from the bartender burned his throat. The second glass he emptied still hurt, but not as much as his heart did. On his third glass, he was already drunk, but still vividly over aware of his terminal loss. The alcohol didn't manage to numb his pain, not one bit, just his body, and now that she was gone without any viable chance to return in life, he couldn't care less what, about what would happen to his body. He just hoped he could drink himself to oblivion. That was the worst. His memory, he couldn't stop the flow of memories coming his way. No matter how much alcohol he drank, it didn't seem to do anything to help him forget. The memories kept coming, hitting him hard and sweet. They were bittersweet. He welcomed them, he welcomed the memories and yet, at the same time, he ached and wanted them to stop. He spent some of his days and evenings like this for months after Alison was gone. Sometimes he remembered bits and pieces of what happened on those drunken evenings. One time in particular he yelled at the TV news announcing yet another ecological disaster in some part of the world. Heavy deforestation, lakes and rivers and oceans being polluted with chemicals released by cosmetic companies, species of animals going extinct, and people's greed for money were more common than ever. People seemed oblivious and ignorant of all of it. They allowed it. They were more concerned with how many likes they had on Facebook and how they would grow farms on there instead of in the real world. Hell if I care to do anything anymore, he mumbled, staring at the TV. The world is going to shit, and why bother trying to save it? It looks like people don't give a damn anyway, he said with bitterness in his voice. Otherwise, they would rise up and do something about it. They would start a revolution, but they don't. So fuck it, let it all go to hell. The planet will still be here, we'll still recover, but we won't. So let's drink to that, he said with irony in his voice, frowning and raising his glass at the TV. Let's drink to the immense mass of population that lives only to eat and shit and fuck. Soon it will all be dust in the wind, he declared, finishing his drunken speech in pure, in pure clarity and logic. A reflection of a woman showed on his whiskey glass then, as he turned to empty it again. In the reflection, a young baby was by her side too. Look frowned and the sadness clouded his eyes. The bartender eyed him and considered throwing him out in that instant, but he didn't because he knew him. He knew what sort of man Luke Evans was. Everybody in the village loved him. He was the sweetest man. But that was before Alison's death. Now Luke was somebody else. He wanted to be somewhere else. Sometimes he remembered who he was too. Other times he remembered nothing at all but the blood running on his hands. Do you remember? A voice whispered in Luke. Looks here, and then the figure of a woman suddenly appeared in front of his drunken eyes. Luke, Luke dropped his beverage. Alcohol and shards of glass sh scattered on the wooden floor. He stared at the sudden apparition. The woman's face was distorted, yet somehow familiar, as if he knew whom it belonged to. The woman's voice, he thought he knew the voice too. He knew it. He was certain. Oh, how could it be? He turned to his dog, a chocolate retriever. Do you see this too? Luke asked him. The dog sto stared at him, whimpering. Remember, the voice said in another whisper. Luke felt the caress of a cold hand on his neck, and then he eventually collapsed on the bar floor and lost consciousness. Chapter 8, and probably the last chapter I'll read you, maybe. I'm not sure. <coughs> yeah, probably the last chapter, and then if you want to check out my book, make me really happy. When he woke up, Luke was lying on a bed, his own. The palm of his hand was grazed and stained the bed sheets with blood, now dry. A tiny shard of glass was under his skin, and that spot was itching and burning him, but that was nothing compared to the pain shooting through his temples. His head felt as if pulled in a million directions, and he wished, he wished someone would shoot him in the head just to end the pain. All the pain. 
things weren't so simple, however. Unlike others, he lived. Unlike others, he was left only with small physical scars, one at the back of his head and another one low under his right cheek, where his dimple would form if he smiled, almost fooling people that it was, that it was part of it and not a remnant of a tragic day. He got to see another day, afternoon, whatever time it was anymore, but he wasn't eager to face it. He saw his dog sitting by his bed on a pile of dirty clothes, gazing at him. Luke dragged his feet to the bathroom to take a piss. He was undoing his pants when, his, when suddenly he dropped his hands and knelt, grabbed the sides of the toilet seat and emptied the contents of his stomach. He wiped his mouth with the side of his hand and then sat there for a while, leaning on the cold wall of the bathroom. After a few long moments, he stood and took a piss. He flushed, then washed the blood and the puke from his hands with cold water, cleaning his face too, wiping all the way across his hair, then dried himself a bit and slowly returned to the bedroom. He took another glance at Hugo, his dog. He went to the kitchen and, and brought some food for the dog, leftover pasta. It was, an, it was one of the dog's favorite foods, yet he stood and looked at the small pieces and then sat back on the pile of clothes without, without touching the food. Instead, he glanced at the close-up photo of Luke, Allison and himself as a puppy, holding each other, resting on the nightstand. He glanced back at Luke and then rested his head, then he rested his head on his paws. Not in the mood for food either, buddy? Hugo made no sound. Luke sighed. He opened his music folder on his laptop, selected several songs at once and turned on Grey Room by Damien Rice. He then grabbed Allison's pillow in his arms and went back to sleep, back to oblivion, or at least he tried. So, this is it. Um, yeah, I've read you in the previous video, and this as well combined. I've read you there were like eight, eight chapters, which you can download on Kindle as well for free, if you want to check out my book. Um, I hope you had fun hearing me read this. Sorry, my intonation or pronunciation is not perfect my accent you know um but yeah um i hope you enjoyed listening to this i i always i always love listening to other authors or people reading out loud um i i grew up with listening to the radio like you know, listening theater theater plays on the radio at night when I was a child, so I think that has to do with it. it. I just find it really nice to listen to someone's voice and imagine, imagine the story, imagine the characters. I mean, this is a bit distracting because you can see me, <laughs> but I think you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for listening to this. I hope you'll check out the story, um, and I hope you like it if you read it. Um, thank you so much for your time and come back um, uh, come back to the channel I am going to record a video about the best book I have ever read although I always say that there's no such thing as the best book because there's so many genres so many kind of stories but honestly I think I found a book that I could honestly recommend as <laughs> the best book so yeah Thank you for your time and have a lovely day, afternoon, evening, <laughs> wherever you are in the world. Take care.